Hello. In this lesson we, on physics, we're going to give you a general approach to solving problems, especially problems that use numbers and equations. After all, the whole point of physics is to stick numbers onto the universe and onto reality. Therefore, yep, we'd better show you a way of doing this. So, there's about a seven or eight step plan on how to do a basic physics problem as suitable for high school or first, second year university. So, step one. Read the question. It's always useful to know what you're actually meant to be answering. Okay, now that you've read the question in an exam or a test or in an assignment, step one. Draw, draw one properly. Draw a picture. Okay, a picture is worth a thousand words. Okay, well, maybe not literally. If you ask for a 3,000 word assignment, your teacher does not want to see three pictures, okay? But when you're solving problems, a picture is worth a thousand words. It really is. It helps you figure things out a lot easier. Number two, write down what you know. I usually do that on the top right hand side of paper or on a board or anything like that. Step three. Okay, these first two steps, what they do is they define the problem. They let you get see in your head what is the problem. Drawing a picture, write down what you know. These define the problem. Now we've got to solve the problem. So usually at some point we have to choose equations. It's a lot easier to figure out which equations to choose if you've written down what you know. It really does make it easier. Number four, rearrange the equations. Okay, notice that we rearrange the equations before we stick the numbers in. There's a lot of reasons for doing this. Remember, this is a physicist who teaches telling you this. Not a teacher who does a bit of physics from time to time. This is actually a physicist telling you, rearrange the equation before you stick the numbers in. It will make it easier for you in the long run. Five. Once you've rearranged the equation, put in numbers. And being a physicist, I must stress this, with units. In physics, if a number has a unit, then you always write that unit next to that number, every time you write it down. It doesn't matter if it's working, it doesn't matter if it's always write it down. If, in physics, if it has a unit and you don't write it down, it doesn't mean squat. I mean, if I'm talking voltage and I write down 36, what's that mean? Is that 36 volts? Is it millivolts? Is it microvolts? Don't know. If it has a unit, KV, kilovolts, if it has a unit, write it down. Otherwise, it doesn't mean anything. You will not get marks. Okay, so put the numbers in with units. Step six, solve. For most people, this will mean use a calculator. And step seven, once you've done this, read the question. Might seem obvious, but there have been so many marks lost over the years because people get excited getting down here, about getting to here that they forget to convert it into what the question asks. Like it puts, the question says, how many millivolts of power, um, electricity does it take? And I leave it in volts. I haven't answered the question. So I read the question to make sure I've actually answered what is asked for. If you do that every time, it doesn't matter what the subject is, your mark will probably go up 5% right there. So read the question. Step one, read, well step zero, to read the question. Figure out what's going on. It's by draw a picture, write down what you know. Choose equations. Rearrange the equations. Put the numbers in with the units. Solve 
read the quiz. So let's actually try this on an example. Classic, classic example is the dragsters. Okay, a funny car does a run in well, I don't know, five seconds. Yeah, that seems reasonable. What is the acceleration and final velocity? Okay, so we have a question. So, step one, draw a picture. Okay, this does not have to be a Rembrandt. This is just representational of what's happening. Two, write down what we know. Now there's a little bit of extra information in here which you haven't been going, but let's, I will go through all of this. Okay, what's the car's initial velocity? If it's a dragster, it starts, it does a standing start, so the initial velocity, zero meters per second. What else do we know? Um, we know the time. Time equals five seconds. What else do we know? We know the distance. A standing quarter mile is 400 meters. Actually, it's 402.25 meters. What do I want to find out? I want to find out the acceleration, and I want to find out the final velocity. So, step one, draw a picture. 400 meters. Right, step two, write down what you know. Step three, choose an equation, because I've done this before. D is equal to VIT uh, squared. We will be going through the kinematic equations at a later time. I'm just showing you the basic process here. So you're not expected to know this right now, but you will by the end of the course. So. At the moment, don't worry too much about this. I'll do all the hard work here. We know that the initial velocity is zero. So anything times zero is going to equal zero. So this bit here just vanishes. So D equals half a t squared. I want to rearrange this for a, remember? That's the next step. Step four is rearrange. So 2d equals a2 squared. If you haven't checked out my section or my clips on how to rearrange equations, I recommend you do so now. There's some basic rearranging uh, up online at the moment. There should be some intermediate level stuff coming shortly. So check out the clips on how to rearrange equations. Okay, what else do we know? 2d Okay, so I want to find 2d over t squared equals a. Now I stick in numbers. The acceleration is twice the distance. Distance we said is 400 meters. Notice I stick in the number with unit. And notice I stick it in brackets. The brackets are just there to make everything tidy. It's a style thing. You won't get marked down if you don't do it, but it makes it a lot easier if you do. The time is 5 seconds, and that's squared. And so I square the bracket, that means I square the units as well. Okay, so that's going to equal 800 meters over 25 seconds squared. Okay, so what's that? That's 30. 32 meters per second squared. It's quite a heavy acceleration actually. It's like three Gs because it's sustained. Woo! Okay, so I now know the acceleration. 32 meters per second squared. With you. So once I've figured this out, I write it down. Join it. 
I then read the question. Have I answered the question? The question is, what is the acceleration? Answer that. And final velocity. So I'd better answer the final velocity. It's a good thing I checked. So, let's try this. The final velocity. Again, there's another equation which I know, which we'll show you later. Bi. So the final velocity equals the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. So step step one, draw a picture, done that. Step two, write down what I know. Step that, done that. Step three, choose an equation, done that. Step four, rearrange the equation. That's what I want to find, so that's done. Step five, put in numbers. Bi is equal to zero meters per second plus 32 meters per second squared times 5 seconds equals 160 meters per second. That's the solve. Use the calculator. So, let's just check. Remember, if you put two numbers next to each other, if you just run two numbers next to each other, that means times multiply. Okay, so, step 7, read the question. What is the acceleration? The acceleration is 32 meters per second squared. What is the final velocity? The final velocity is 160 meters per second. Have we finished? Have we answered the question? The answer is yes. At this point, we take our marks, we do our little victory dance, and then, hope nobody's looking, 